Welcome on guys, well, we're back out green lining. This time I'm trying out the 300 TE from Husqvarna. This is the big 300 two-stroke. It's way, way too much bike for me. It's an absolute beast. So we're going to go out, meet up with the guys. We're also heading up to Lumi's now to meet Pete Hippodrones. But we've got a bit of a crew today. We've got some serious hardware. Two Huskies, Barry on his 250 EXC, WR, an older KTM six days. What's this one? This is the EXC125. It's the EXC125. That's all you need, don't it? That's all you need. So let's do it. Let's do it. Right, so the little 300, or little 300, the humongously powerful, brutish 300. I've been riding this for about, I've had it about three weeks, I've been out, this is only the second time I've been out on this. So I went out the first time just to familiarise myself with it a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's so powerful, it's not a beginner bike by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, I love to smell a two-stroke in the morning. Right, and what map position am I in? Map position two, which is the softest map because we're about to get muddy. Let's try third, because second's just a little bit too lively. Good thing about these, they do have a, a, a surprising amount of torque. That is wet. All right, next little lane, lane number two. All right, so we can get comfortable now. This one's a bit firmer underfoot, so I can relax into it a bit more, hopefully. Get find that rear brake. Give it another cod. And I'm in fourth gear now. Plenty of torque for the low down the rev range to pull it along. 40 miles an hour. Foot out. Wee-ha! I always thought the two-stroke maintenance was quite intense. Well, as it happens, the two-stroke maintenance is less than the four-strokes. Because this is obviously the oil's injected into this, you don't have to do oil changes, so there's no 10 hour, 15 hour oil changes. The oil is fresh constantly. The only thing is the gear oil. The gear oil should be changed once every three or four months. And that's it. You know, engine maintenance I'm talking about. What you do have to do is they say the piston and rings should be changed every 100 hours but that's with competition use. Now, even the four strokes say they should be changed about 150 hours. So it's not that much difference to the, the four stroke anyway. And I've got friends who have got a 300 and, and Dan, who, Dan Romanian Dan's got a 300. And he's done about 220 hours and he's still on the same original piston and rings. If you can put up with the power delivery, which isn't as linear, it isn't as smooth as the four strokes, they're definitely harder to ride. I mean, Wayne has a 2017 250, which is a little bit more manageable than one of these. This is the big boy's bike. <laughs> and I'm not a big boy. Well, not in skill level anyway. I've got bloody peanuts for bollocks. Left here is rut central. This is a sit down one because this is, we went down this one the other week. It's chalk, it's all chalk down here. It is, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having. It's all rutted. Get on that rear brake now, chops. Ooh, it's slippery. It is slippery. Oh, God. This is slippery. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Put him through. His skill level far exceeds mine. I can't stand up here. I've not got the skill level. Oh, God, Nelly. If you're on and off the throttle, slow speed like this, in map position two, it's actually not too bad. Shit. This is the fuel and oil injected engine. So it has two fuel injectors at either side of the barrel 
so the fuel is injected directly into the barrel and the oil is injected into the throttle body. So it's only, when you're in the throttle body, it's only air and oil which are mixed. So thus you're not losing a lot of the oil washed into the fuel. That's why these are so efficient on oil, because it's just being mixed with the air and not being, you're not losing 50% of that oil being washed away with the fuel. Morning! Merry Christmas! Because it's using precisely the amount of oil it needs, the oil actually lasts for about eight tankfuls of fuel. So you can put eight tank fuels of just pure unleaded in the petrol tank and the oil tank has about eight tankfuls. So realistically, you know, you, you, you very rarely have to put any oil in it. And when you do have to put oil in it, it's easy because it's just in the frame here. Just unscrew that from the frame, pour your oil in, and the actual catch tank is just above the actual throttle body. I think it's like 0 0.7, 0 0.7 litres that holds of oil. So as it doesn't use much, you don't need to carry that much. Very clever. Because it's fuel injected, of course, you get all the other benefits of the bike's fueling being perfect, no matter what altitude you are, what temperature you are, because that was always the problem with two strokes, getting the jetting right for the conditions. No such problem anymore. All controlled by the ECU. The fueling is perfect, whatever the conditions. All right, next lane. This is quite a steep uphill chalky incline now. And then I think we're coming down the most rutted chalky incline you've ever seen. Let's try and stand up here. Let's try and look as if we know what we're doing, even if we actually don't. Use that torque, Chops, use that torque. Use that two-stroke torque. Yeah, it's not much grip here. Oh, that put a stop to me. Now we're in trouble. Oh, bollocks. To hit it harder. There we go. Pissing chalk. Thin down, throttle it up. Don't look down, don't look down. Ignore the barbed wire. It's not fair you get guys you guys are getting impromptu rests because I'm so slow. <laughs> This one is interesting. <laughs> That's a long way down. Get over the front for some grip. Actually, you could literally turn the bike off now. It's pointless having it on. The rut's your friend on this one. This is deeper than last time, isn't it? I don't think, I think Pete would get his beater stuck down here. I don't think he's got the clearance. Pete, you, 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 you might have survived, had a lucky escape here. This kills your legs as well. This is a good pre-Christmas workout. Whew. That'll burn off a few turkey drumsticks. It's really over that. Morning. I wash the tyres off anyway. Some more facts about the Husqvarna because I won't be able to talk about it <laughs> when I'm on the lanes because I'm concentrating too much. This has got the Apex WP suspension. What you do get on the on the Huskies is the adjustable preload on the forks. So they come with the the fork preload adjusters. They also come with the billet forks as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! These also have a composite subframe. So the rear subframe is a mix of carbon fibre and plastic to give it to reduce weight, basically, rather than having aluminium. And the whole rear subframe only weighs one kilo. for 2020 is the frame. It's had a lot of changes. The engine is mounted at a slightly different angle. The swinging arm pickup is at a different angle. 
to give you more traction. They've built in more flex points into the frame and they've made some of the engine mounts billet aluminium now. So it's all been tweaked to make it easier to ride, give you more control. Also, the big change really is the bodywork for this year. They've made it thinner. They've increased the size of the contact patches on the bike. You know, so you can move around, so you can go from sat down to stood up, back and forth. Give you that contact with the bike you need. That's when you want 100 kilos, when you're picking it out of the dirt. All right, Lumi's in a cup of tea, and let's meet up with Pete. All right, we've met up with Pete at Lumi's. We're now hitting the next little lane. This will warm you up. Here goes nothing. Hang on, which throttle position are we in? Let's hit that number two. We don't want that number one down here, that's for sure. This is like a, it's almost like a riverbed, really. It's a lot of more rocky, this one. Yep, interesting. Oh, I nearly crashed. Stalled it. Bloody slippery. Ah. Yep, that is a lot of shit there. You don't want to go there, you get stuck. Do you want to Pete? Ah. Yeah, they're not cold anymore, are you? Christ. Hit this a bit harder. Yep, that's slippy. Drop off. I thought people went off then. I'm a bit out of control. <laughs> I'm getting used to throttle response on it. I still find it peaky compared to the fours. But I'm getting you I'm getting better. Maybe I'm getting better. Well, I think that is more or less it. Brilliant day for the Husky 300. Slowly got used to it, and my skill level, it's obviously not, not the ideal bike for me really, it's a bit too much of, a, of an animal, but saying that, with the power switch, so you can adjust, it's, it's, I'm getting used to it, it's all about just getting used to it isn't it, I mean you do need that instant power, my god has it got it. So I hope you enjoyed that guys, we're going to go and give us a good jet wash and a clean up and I'll probably be out on this again. I'll see you next time, either out on this or out on something else. <laughs> Catch you later guys. Boost it, bunch up sea. <laughs> and he's down. Oh, it's so slippery, I can't even stand up. Oh, shit, shit a brick.